How's that everyone? Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be showing you how to turn your long exposure photos from this to this. Let's go. Okay, so first off, I would just like to start out by saying that by no means am I saying that this is the only way or the best way. This is just my way and how I do it and how I think that you can give your normal long exposure photography photos just a little bit of more pop and life and movement. So if you guys are excited, please leave a subscribe if you haven't already. And then yeah, let's jump straight into the tutorial. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I'm just gonna open my Photoshop project. You can see it's a blank project. Now I've already pre-selected these photos that I want. These are photos that I took in the previous video. If you haven't watched that already, you can go check it out up here where I explain exactly how I took the photos and everything. So I just selected these that I actually use for the photo. And then these three are the only ones that we're gonna worry about for now. So I'm just gonna select them and then just drop them in my project. So I'm not gonna be using the camera raw for this because we're gonna edit it later in Lightroom. I'm just gonna say, okay. Okay, so now you see here, we have three images, all with different exposures. If you wanna check out the settings, let me just quickly go. You can see that each of these are taken with f-stop 22 this one's exposure four seconds this one is also four seconds iso 100 because it's at night and it's a long exposure we have the advantage of that long shutter speed we so the reason is we keep the shutter speed open longer the f-stop to get it a better a, a wider depth of field to get everything in focus we use it as a, at a low iso so we get as little as possible grain and noise these are the three that i'm going to use so for now, first step, I'm going to select the top two and press shift and then click just to select them. Then I am going to change the mode to lighten. There you can see already it comes through. Then now I'm just going to group them. So I'm just going to say control J or command J in a Mac if you're using Mac to copy it. Then I'm just going to command or control E to make it one layer. Then these two that we've selected now, just going to put in a group and then by pressing control G, and then you can hide that group. We're not gonna be using it. This is the first option that we're gonna use. Now, you can see, if I press Z, if I zoom in, you can see here are a few places where it didn't line up properly. The tripod might have just moved a little bit. So now I'm just gonna press, go to the eraser, change a little bit, and now we can actually, you just have to make sure that you're on the top la layer so that you can actually erase the top parts that you don't want so that's going to be everywhere where it's not the road with the lights just to make these poles and everything give it one source so you just go through everything make sure all these poles and lights everything is nice and singular gonna go around here all the way at the back I'm just doing this fast just for time's sake so at this point I just like to say you can use a layer mask for time's sake I'm just not gonna use it just to spare time so now we have this we got all these extra lights but this side is still a bit bare so this is where we're gonna go to our other photo we took the last one I just want to drag and drop it inside my project it's gonna create a new layer so I'm just gonna say okay it's gonna create a new layer there at the top but we don't want that obviously so we're gonna go to the blending mode we're gonna make it lighten now the most important part here is we only want this red part so now what we are gonna do is we're gonna go to our eraser tool again Now we can erase all these extra things on the side that is not part of that. Cool. Now at this stage, if you want, you can stop here. You don't have to do anything further. You can just go into color grading. I'm not done yet. I'm just quickly gonna show you guys how we can make this better. This is like, to me, the cream on the cake. Now, what we are gonna do is, we're gonna select a new layer then we are going to go to image then apply image now we're going to make sure it's merged multiply 100% press 
press OK. Now you might think oh, that didn't really do anything. Now we're going to go to screen mode. Now you see it just lifted everything. Now what we are going to do now is on this we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now the thing is I shot this on the Canon 70D which is a 20 megapixel camera. Now what we can do is you can move it to the radius of 20 for every megapixel. If you want you can go more, if you want you can do 22, uh, not. if you want you can make it 22 just how much you want. I'm just gonna stick I think what I used for this one was about 21, 20 or 20. Okay so now we are going to say okay. So the main thing that we want is we just want these lights to be blurry. So the rest of everything we can just go to the erase and now we can just erase this part that is not affected by the light. I'm going to be careful around there for all the street lights because the street lights I also want that glow and that haziness to it. I mean just get in here a bit. Just everything we don't want to blur. Just take that out. But I'm going to leave these lights to leave that hazy blurriness there. So now I'm seeing that there's a little thing there. So I'm just going to go back to these previous layers. Just take out this that I don't want. Make sure which one it is. Okay. And go back to the blue one. I'm being very careful of not touching any of the lights going to the previous layer just to erase and make sure everything is correct there you see we missed a little spot at the back you can also see we missed a little spot and there okay now this is this is gonna be okay I think when I did this the first time it was a little bit better more thought through you get you guys get the idea so now you can see this is all blurry okay now what we're gonna do is so I'm just going to file save it as a TIFF file and then we're going to jump into Lightroom. Okay, now we are in Lightroom. So, funny story, this is not my computer, this is actually my brother's computer. So for my edit, edit that I did originally, I actually used one of my um, presets, which was actually a portrait preset, which is very weird. So for now, it's actually good that we don't have that, so now I can show you exactly how it would go about editing something like this. So the first thing that I see that I'm going to do is I like to go more to a blue side. So I'm just might just cool it down just a teeny little bit. Minus seven. But then the second thing is the shadows. I'm just going to raise a bit so we can get more of that sky. The highlights we can drop a bit. We don't want to let them clip. So for contrast, I don't touch the contrast here. Usually what I do is I raise the whites here a bit and then I drop the blacks. Because we're going to go into the tone curve later. So now for this just gonna raise the vibrance a bit drop the saturation now here's where the fun stuff comes in so tone curve okay so for the tone curve i'm just gonna make a point in the middle point there and a point there so for this i don't want the blacks to be too black so i'm just gonna raise them a tiny bit but to get that contrasty feel i'm gonna drop this here i'm gonna raise the highlights here things already that makes it pop a little bit more you can even raise the tones just a tiny bit but I don't want to do that too much so this is just going to be a very quick edit so the clarity I'm going to bring up a bit I want to raise the exposure but but the problem is here this is getting bright as well so I might just actually jump into radial filter now then I'm going to make it like so Space it like this and then I want to go and make the feather a bit bigger and then now this will bring the surrounding areas darker so because I want the focus to be here this is this is my focus in the photo I might just bring down the highlights just a little bit to just to darken that up a bit more so now the second thing that I want to do is just pressing done done with that so now to get that to the color stuff what we are going to do is i'm going to take the blues i'm going to shift it more towards the teal side and then bring the luminance 
up just a bit and then the saturation just a little bit up i don't really like greens in my photos so i tend to bring the greens down quite a bit um red for this i'm just going to bring up the lumens a little bit and then just around about minus three minus four around there bring the saturation up a little bit and so make it pop or the yellows make it a little bit warmer just to give it that warm feel because now we are going to go into split toning just afterwards i just want to get these aquas up a bit okay so here's where the fun part comes in so in highlights i want the highlights to be warm so i want them to be around about a yellow orange type of color so what you do is you hold down alt and then you move this until you get where you want i'm going to go around about here where the orange ish there and then just gonna boost that a bit and then now for the shadows it's my fun part because i usually go to just a cold blue type side so usually 190 is my golden number which i usually tend to go to this is still a bit green so 200 it's going to lean more to the 200 side just going to bring that up a bit just to give it that stylized feel one thing that i still want to do is just going to go into this the radar filter again and then just make it like so to fit it over the road just to bring the selected areas exposure up just a bit we're going to increase the feather a bit inverts so we only affect this if you press overlay you can see what it affects so just going to bring it down a little bit Don't worry too much about the placement now press o again now you can see that the exposure went up by one stop which is a little bit too much might just bring down the highlights a bit just to not make it blow out if you press j you can see where it clips you can see that it clips a bit so might bring down the highlights and then the whites as well that will help and then we'll bring up this exposure a bit more to get that glowy feel that we had and now you can see this is actually turning into quite a masterpiece some people might not agree this is kind of looking a little green still i don't like the green so i might just shift it a bit to the purples and then also down in the green make it a little bit more towards that and then also this back to the blues a bit even jumping into here and the greens and the shadows are bothering me so i'm going to go into the tone curve bring down the greens a bit not too much and then we can even go into the blues and then raise that tiny bit in the shadows like so take it out of the highlights just place that point there that it doesn't affect the top and actually bring that down a bit and what's actually bothering me is this here this part here is actually bothering me so what we're going to do now is just going to go back to the radial filter just press o just to see which one i am selecting okay so this is that one the feather is just take down the feather a bit more more towards the towards the lower side just so we can get this clear piece here Might, maybe move it around just to get it better but now i'm going to turn down the saturation and that you'll see that's going to take away all that color if I, you can see all this color here i don't want that so i'm just going to turn the saturation down now it looks all metallic and nice so definitely that's one of maybe turn down the shadows a bit and then yeah, that's gonna let's maybe raise yeah uh, like that I, th I don't think i'm gonna mess about with it too much anymore so you press like that and you can see you know if we go with the before and the after you can see we made quite the difference this looks glowy i like the blue there maybe the reds there can get a bit more if we can go to the shadows might raise them a bit take down the highlights but i want that nice red and blue glow there which is not that bad so all in all not a bad result if you guys enjoyed this video please make sure to subscribe if you want to see something else 
please let me know in the comments down below then i'll get you that this has been fun i just wanted to show you guys how i got this photo which in my opinion is a nice way to actually explore and just play around in photoshop it's also a nice way just to give your long exposure photos a bit more life and movement and dynamics how i would do this now is just go to the orientation and then just i always always level your photos make sure it's straight just make sure i'm a big fan of just pressing auto so now what i will do is i will just actually go and then just resize this photo just to cut that out since i didn't do it in photoshop because i was lazy <laughs> so boom and there you have it now you can just export it well there there you have it guys thank you so much for joining me on this quick little tutorial on how to make your long exposure photos better just a reminder it is subjective it's all up to your creativity please don't let anyone else tell you otherwise it's all up to your creativity if you guys want to see anything else please let me know down in the comments and i'll be sure to get to it and then thank you so much to all of you every one of you who have already subscribed and if you haven't please consider subscribing and liking this video and then i will see you guys next week Cheers.